Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last video, I showed um, myself building these um, return pipes back to the tank with the ball valve attached. They're all done, done all 20 the other night. And yeah, they're all cured and ready to be attached to uh, the T pieces, um, all the elbows, which will then be connected to a common pipe that feeds the water back to the tank from the sump, or back to the tanks I should say. I'm gonna be PVC cementing those together. There's only five on the table, but there is 20 all up, um, as you saw in the thumbnail of this video. So, what I'm gonna do before I do that um, is show you the tool I use to cut the PVC. Okay, so this is a PVC cutter, basically a blade, a very sharp blade with um, a groove that can hold up to 30 mil, 32 mil pipe and hose. Now, I haven't been able to cut my 25 mil pipe, these ones here, with this, the, the, the groove isn't, isn't big enough and it just feels too sketchy. It just feels like it's gonna pop out and that's gonna clamp down. So I've resorted to using the, um, my saw to cut these and send them back, which is, takes quite a while and a lot of dust is, is created. But with these, I was able to cut all the little joins that are in this pipe. So there's one, two, three, four cuts or joins of the 15 mil PVC pipe that you see here. So each of these has four little pieces of centimeter and a half to two centimeters long joins in um, the in the PVC. Here there's one 20 mil piece that I used to cut this and it just makes the job a lot quicker. You should wear protective goggles when you're doing this. But basically you put the pipe inside, um, you don't have to squeeze too tightly and you kind of score it. You just rock it back and forth like that. You're kind of scoring the pipe just on the one side and eventually you'll see, I, that didn't take much effort, it just, the blade goes through the PVC and then click and you've cut it. No dust, no PVC dust like from the saw uh, that you get, it just goes everywhere and because it's static, um, electricity builds up in it and it's a static, it just sticks to everything and it's just a mess and then you've got to send these guys back. Uh, so I don't like using the saw to do cut PVC, this tool makes the job a lot easier a lot quicker, yeah, a lot neater. So um, I definitely recommend investing in, in some sort of PVC pipe slash hose cutter. This is by Fiskars. That's all I want to show you with the, with the pipe cutter. I'll just put that down. So some of these are gonna, the majority of them are gonna have these um, 25 mil T pieces attached to them this way, like that. And the end pieces, the end caps on the end last tanks on each row will have an L bracket, an elbow, so either that way or that way, depending on what tank it is, on what end of the stand it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna re remind myself not to glue every single one with a T piece, otherwise I'm gonna need to buy end caps. But uh, yeah, we should be right. So what I might do is start um, with the end pieces, because I know I need four of those even though I've got five elbows of a spare so I'll just do one this way one that way and then another one that way and another one that way so two each for both ends of the stand um, top row and middle row uh, and yeah let's just get cracking and do that now so I'll put the mask on and we're just gonna put some PVC cement on the inside of this all the way around put that there this little 25 mil pipe goes in there. Just hold it for about five seconds. For some people say 30. I mean, these aren't super pressure pipes. Like, you know, the, the pressure that's going through this isn't gonna be huge. So uh, it's not like you're installing pipes to, to, to mains water. Um, that should be enough. Now the key with this, join is to get it you know 90 degrees that way because this is going to be sitting on a tank at one of the ends of the of the of the stand so i think that'll be enough so i'm just going to pvc cement the inside of this that should do it and uh there 
as you can see that's pretty much stuck on there I can't twist that anymore so that's one um, return pipe done so I'm going to do that another 20 times and uh, the majority of them will have the T pieces but I'll get these elbows out of the way just so I don't forget to do them anyway that's that one let's do the next one with this um, turn that way so again wipe off the excess from the brush because you'll just have plenty of cement going everywhere Dab it in the middle. Pop it there. Grab your pipe. I pop it in. Just hold it there for a few seconds. It should be right. So this one's going to get the elbow like this as well. So we'll put some PC cement in this. must have been a little bit too long but all good so that's one man stands let's do the next bit so these are going to go the other way so these are you know pointing to the left these are going to point to the right the other end of the stand See if you're working with a wider hose because you can the brush is the brush is a bit large. Working with the 15 mil pipes and using that big brush to get PVC cement in there was a bit tricky, but uh, we managed. So this one's going to go on here just like this. to the tanks um, on the top and the middle row. Now I do have this um, other elbow and I just remembered that it is for the, um, the last tank. It's gonna go on the left tank, so this has to be that way of the two four by twos. So um, I'll just connect that now. Um, that's all I had five elbows, not four. tank so it's going to go that way and uh, let's do that now it's going to go like that so I'm just eyeballing it to kind of be square and that's on so there we go so that's those ones done now the T pieces so the T pieces have to kind of be square to the to the ball valve. So these guys are going to go like that. Got one of these inside of here. There she goes. And this is going to pop on like that. And 
and then the main line from the return pumps will connect to the T pieces and elbows. So hopefully, it will all work. There we go. That's one T piece done. I'll just let that sit for a bit like that. I'll finish the rest of these off, guys, and um, I'll show you them at the end. So there it all is, guys. It looks pretty crazy. Um, they're all done. Now all I have just to do is connect them all together. Which is the next fun part. And uh, yeah, I need to cut more 25mm BVC. <laughs> uh, measure it all up. And get it cut. PVC cement these together. And hopefully I'll have it all done this weekend. Whew. And I can test out those pumps. Get more motivation to do it all because I this is taking a lot of work. If you're ever planning on building a fish room, really give it some consideration to how many tanks you want. This is only 20 tanks. It might seem a lot to, to some people out there, and it, and it is, but there, there are fish rooms where, uh, you know, they have upwards of 100 tanks. Obviously, they said they're, they're selling fish and make a living off it, but, you know, this is just a hobby of mine and um, if I make some some cash from it fantastic otherwise you know it just it's just a nice hobby uh, to have but yeah anyway kind of going off track just really consider how many tanks you want to have and how you want to run that system many people just run sponge filters in each individual tank um, and heat the room very cheap way to do it a family member of mine heats each individual tank as well as running bu bubble uh, sponge filters on each tank. So that's a little bit more pricey to do it that way. Each heater, individual heating the tank. You know, everyone has their own choices and reasons for doing things. My one was to hook up all the tanks to one to one sub and to, to heat the room and also have sponge filters just as a backup in case I need to isolate tanks. It saves you on your power long, long, long term, and it's uh, your maintenance is a little easier. I don't have to test 20 tanks pH and nitrate levels. I can just test the water from the sun or any one of these aquariums, and I know it is the same in every single aquarium here. And that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to do this fish room the way I've done it, off a central system. You know, the, having temperature swings and, and water chemistry strips, uh, swings, although for the, you know, Tanganyika and Cichlids, they're hardy, they can handle, uh, you know, some, some variation in water parameters, but uh, at the end of the day, I might change the, the system up and not have Tanganyikans and might, and might want something uh, that, that um, requires more stable water parameters where there isn't a temperature swing as much or there isn't a chemistry swing as much, like in pH or, or something. I might switch this out to marines one day. Uh, I used to have a reef tank. I used to keep marine fish and um, used to grow aquapora coral. And, you know, there is a demand um, in Australia for aquacultured marine uh, species fish and, and, and coral rather than taking them off the reef, which I, th which I think is just a horrible thing that, that we're doing in the hobby. But anyway, again, kind of getting off track. I just wanted to do this setup this way so I didn't have massive temperature swings, changes in water chemistry over time. You know, this is almost 3,000 litres of water. So fish even in the smallest tanks here, it's like they're swimming. You know, the, 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 the water is going to be so stable even in the smaller tanks. Uh, you won't have that, that swing in, in water parameters or temperature. Uh, so uh, that's the reason one of the big reasons why I did it this way. You see it's a lot of work, a lot of planning go, goes into this. As if you've watched my other videos you would have seen, it's taken me quite a while to get to this stage. Uh, it started in October-ish of last year, 2018. It's now June 2019, and I still don't have the tanks up and running. I've got one tank that you can probably hear on the microphone that's cycling for the gold oscillatus. 
that um, I'm going to put in there very soon, maybe in about another two to three weeks I'll be in there. Apart from that, all the other tanks are empty. So it's been a long journey. So just consider what, what you want to do. Do you want to do it, you know, really on the cheap, just have individual tanks, have some sponge filters in each tank and warm the room um, using a, a, an, air, an air conditioner or a heat pump or something. You know, the, the, the benefit of using an air conditioner, if it's too hot in summer, you can cool the room. Uh, so that's, that's the benefit of having a proper air conditioner, a reverse cycle air conditioner. Um, and you know, you can run those air, the sponge filters, sorry, off one massive air pump, an air blower. And it's a very, very cost efficient way to, to run, a, run a fish room. But as I said, like I wanted, I wanted to do it this way for the reasons as I stated. So it, it, it takes a little bit more planning takes a bit more time, you gotta be patient with it. And uh, you know, take your time designing the, the elements. As you can see here, this isn't something you think of overnight. And, and it's, it's a bit of an investment. I've spent about almost $340 on PVC just for the drainage of the system. Just to hook up all the drains and connect them to the sun. I've then spent that again on the returns. All what you see here, um, some other PVC pipe that you don't see here, but which is gonna connect all these together and return the water to the sump. It all costs, you know, I could have, uh, admittedly I could have made some of these joints myself from, you know, lengths of PVC like the, the 90 degree elbows, but I'm, I'm not great with PVC. I wouldn't get them consistent. I want them to look neat. So that's why I've spent the extra uh, a couple of dollars here and there to get the right parts and, and just make it a bit uh, less time consuming uh, to manufacture all these bits because I've had to cut up so much pipe already and sand stuff back uh, and it's taken time. If I had to cut up pipe for elbows, there's, there's three elbows just here and then bend each one. Uh, it would just take so much longer and I, I think this has taken <laughs> long enough just to get to this stage so anyway guys so I'm just gonna let these cure for a while but um, I'm gonna go outside and start cutting up some of the 25 mil pipe which will connect all these guys together and then I'll cement them all together and then lead them down to the sump and then hopefully <laughs> it will be up and running in the next week or so so yeah, that's about it for today guys. Thanks each for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Where's the off switch? <laughs>